Well, hi, John. Hi there, Pascal. First, thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity uh, to have this interview uh, today with you. And um, I'm very happy that you uh, do trust uh, labonlink.ca and me, VA2PV, <laughs> uh, to, uh, to talk about your new product that's going to be released uh, today. So uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I really do appreciate it. And I'm pretty sure the viewers appreciate it uh, as well. So thank you. Well, thank you, Pascal. It's a, a really great opportunity for us to reach uh, a, a big audience with news of our new product that we're releasing today, the RSP1A. And a uh, little bit of uh, background to that. Um, we introduced the original RSP three years ago, and uh, it's been uh, very, very successful, very popular. And as you know, a year ago, uh, we brought out the RSP2, mm -hmm. uh, where we basically put a lot of uh, features and improvements that uh, we some of which perhaps should have been there all along other things that we started to understand were required by a lot from the amateur market which has been really a driver for SDR receiver technology and um, like I say the original low-cost entry product the RSP1 mm -hmm. um, you know uh, it really was time to give it a give it a, a facelift and so we sat around and, and thought about what could we do to take some of the features that we had in the RSP2 and other improvements as well mm -hmm. and we've come up with the RSP1A we've worked our uh, cost base down to get to this magic figure of like $99 US this is US mm -hmm. it's $99.95 as a retail price uh, for what we think is a uh, really excellent value for money uh, mid-range SDR. So this is um, what we've done. And we're calling it the RSP1A because, in fact, we've stopped making the RSP1. And we want to give okay. future users um, all the benefits. So it's, it's actually a replacement from the former yeah. RSP1. Okay. But, but before we get into you know the technical mm -hmm. um, uh, capabilities that we've built into it, it's very important to understand what remember it's an SDR it's a software defined radio yeah. and really we see there's kind of three pillars to the success and utility of um, an SDR there's the hardware itself that we'll come on to which obviously takes time and there's a whole lot of logistics in bringing out a new model we'll talk about that and that's what we've done here but there's also the software and that's so either software that we produce our own SDR Uno which we're yeah. constantly trying to improve people always want more we do as much as we can and bit by bit we get releases out there doing more and more um, and then finally perhaps most importantly is this kind of support network uh, which is out there which is the community at large mm -hmm. be it through our own forum on our website or the um, the community forum uh, on face face the Facebook yeah is, uh, you actually reach seven thousand uh, yeah. uh, user member into that group eh? so and it, I it's saw growing, that recently. It's growing every day and, and that's a, that's a great support group mm -hmm. in terms of particularly new applications as we move more into industrial applications and um, uh, some of the stuff going on in the lab so um, I just wanted to make that point that all those people have already got an RSP one will continue to benefit by the um, mm -hmm. The new software the new techniques and improvements and the rsp1 itself remains a, a pretty rugged useful um sdr but it is three years old and hence now we're focused uh, on bringing out the rsp1a yeah well well i actually i have all three units here of your products i have the rsp1 which i love very much and work very well and this morning i was switching with, with the RSP one alpha and the RSP two. Okay. So, <laughs> and I was switching with the, the SDR, you know, and they work, all of them work very well. So, uh, this is, uh, the, something we talked last year, uh, about, you know, I remember those days when I, we were using the RTL, um, uh, stick and we had to manipulate DLL and everything, uh, with the SDR, you know, it's a lot more easier to get started. You just plug that in, download the software, install the software, and that's about it. And it's the, the software 
is supporting all the products so there's no different software for each RSP so that that is great as well and they all working very good but you just add features and I was reading uh, the uh, October 2017 the review into the QST about the RSP2 and something you know I was I was happy for you guys because we talk about you know the the, the product last year we had an interview like this and um, I just added here there is a the, one of the last part well it's actually the last paragraph of the review when they, uh, they say that had the advanced func functionality such as the reference clock input and output as well as rubbish shielding particularly with the RSP2 Pro and you have a software defined receiver that is serious contender for science and engineering applications so that that is a pretty serious statement uh, that you have here for the RSP too. Yep. And in fact, for the whole of the RSP family now with STR Uno, something really unique is the ability to do um, a very accurate field strength measurements. This is RF power measurements. So DBMs, yeah. absolute DBMs and SNR measurements. And not only that, you can save them in a file and um, uh, do recordings over time so if you're doing IOT um, infrastructure development if you're trying to look at atmospheric noise over long periods of time uh, you can set up equipment and um, and monitor come back and analyze the results mm -hmm. so that's 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 a good example of, of the software running over all the different uh, RSP products well, even at this price per point, it's still very, very good. So you have, uh, you know, we talked about that also uh, last year and in our past uh, communication, the fact that I am a RAM radio operator, but there's a lot of people that are shortwave listeners, scientific, that are using this type of product for other stuff, maybe it's stuff that I don't even know, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. for AMS, you can use it as a pan adapter. You, it's also compatible with uh, all the common software like HDSDR, and I think it's- SDR console, some, which is another uh, great British yeah. innovation from Simon Brown, which is constantly improving along with um, all those uh, added uh, control uh, software like OmniRig, um, more yeah. and more um, software is being added. And of course, for the Apple Mac users, we've got uh, Cubic oh. SDR, which is improving and um, and moving more into the kind of Linux, Linux community where... Um, and, you have and some Pi image that also that is compatible uh, with the... I was yeah. going to say, Raspberry Pi now is, is yeah. open as, as the Raspberry Pi 3 has enough uh, you know, computing power to really allow you to use uh, use the RSP family. Mm -hmm. But I would like to um, uh, really just talk through now what yeah. is there in this this new RSP one A that we're very excited about um, releasing today. Yeah, well, before we go to into the all those details people are waiting for. <laughs> well, actually, with the SDR, you know, you have a combination of simplicity. So you offer the simplicity. It's plug and play. And so for someone getting started in radio, any of those units are very good to, to a good starting point to, uh, to get introduced to radio wave. Uh, and at the same time, you can have all the flexibility to experiment with other software image. And so that, that is very good. That, that's, so, a, that's a very yeah. good point. And actually yeah. with the kind of uh, Christmas season coming up, yeah. you know, <laughs> a lot of people my age who uh, got into electronics 40, 50 years ago, um, yeah. through ham radio and they have this nostalgic memories of uh, ham radio and actually um, they're kind of interested in uh, rediscovering it yeah. and up until recently it's been quite a difficult learning curve to um, download all the different drivers and DLLs and, mm, yeah. and then find remember where the ham bands are and what the band plan is and set up the uh, bandwidth the des decimation setting now what we've got in the latest SDR Uno 1.2 is basically on all the popular ham bands, you just press the uh, yep. appropriate button and bang, you've got that ham band there for you. 
Yeah. Um, so that that's uh, that's another. Uh, and it's all mode. Yeah. It's all mode as well. Yeah. You can do digital as well. So it's it's very, you know, it's very it's very good. And maybe someday uh, the you will have like remote servers people that can listen to. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with, <laughs> yeah. Uh, with SDR console today, and we'll be adding that to SDR Uno um, okay. in the next few months. It is it's something we we know we have to to get out there. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, for the Linux people, there's a Soapy Remote today, which runs okay. Linux and already provides that. So yeah, there are a number of options for remote operation, but obviously we want to bring that into SDR Uno as well. Which okay. We well, okay, that's very good. So somebody with an old transceiver can use the uh, one of the uh, uh, RSP and have a pan adapter and have yeah. the, the the Spectrum for under hundred bucks US. So that's Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So I'll. But talk talk to me about the hardware, okay? What's the yeah, difference? So, what the so, new stuff? So let me just just talk through what we've done. Yeah. Probably one of the most exciting things is we've um, actually increased increased the ADC, the analog to digital conversion resolution, up to fourteen bit native okay. for sample rates below six megahertz. Above that, um, you know, it just can't get down the USB, so we have to throttle back. But um, what this means is, and particularly with the um, with the new SDR Uno software is you get 16 bits of resolution with decimation. So okay. that's that's really, you know, just adding to that uh, that dynamic range. We've got um, something that we've focused a lot on and learning from from the real world applications and use of the existing products is enhanced RF preselection. So we've got greater filter selectivity. We've got four additional sub bands compared to the original RSP one. Um, so um, we get much reduced levels of spurious responses. We've improved the LNA architecture and we've put variable gain the rsp1 just had a single gain step again that was something okay. that we put in the rsp2 um so we've got improved into modulation performance uh, so the kind of um we're, we're very much looking forward to qsd taking the rsp1a and putting it through its paces and doing an independent uh, measurements mm -hmm. like they did for the rsp2 and you'll see it's uh it's uh, actually starting to, to to potentially leapfrog even the rsp2 We've extended the coverage, like on the RSP2, down to one kilohertz, which is important yeah, for so that. experimental yeah. guys. Um, and it's all on that single antenna port. We've added the, the BIOS T facility. So mm -hmm. for those guys up at uh, VHF, UHF, where they want to have um, additional low noise amplifiers close to the antenna, they can power them over the BIOS T. We've put in that uh, uh, extra... Uh, stability that you get with a, a temperature controlled uh, TCXO which uh, in the case of the RSP1A um, is 0.5 ppm parts per million but we, we, you can actually trim it down to 0 0.01 ppm. We've also added uh, notch filters because if you're close to those mm -hmm. very powerful AM, FM or even DAB uh, transmitters in uh, certain parts of the world um, they do cause cause problems so we've actually got notch filters for am fm and dab uh which uh, which is um another innovation that we've brought to our entry product and the other thing we've done um we've added the um rf shielding uh, the the coating of um like the, the rsp2 just yeah. like the rsp2 yeah. so so we we've done all those improvements and we've we've established a retail price obviously it will vary country to country uh taxes may may affect yeah. things a bit but the the fundamental price before tax um uh, around the world it, the recommended price is is 99 dollars 95 you know basically okay, yeah 100 bucks is um mm -hmm. what we've achieved here which we think is uh it really um really well, powerful, good. really exciting and yeah. hopefully will open up a, yeah, another range of uh, opportunities for people to uh, explore uh, radio in the way that in the past would cost hundreds of dollars. Yeah, well, uh, actually this morning I was uh, programming some uh, broadcast radio in the FM band and I was also programming some repeater and uh, playing with the swell, so that's very good. Uh, I didn't find the, the scan feature in SDR, you know, so 
just a question like that. Is there um, a way we can scan memory? Yeah. Um, so at the moment you can, uh, with some of the Linux programs, you can actually okay. program your own uh, s sort of uh, change frequency select. But we, at the moment in SDR Uno, don't have what would be viewed as a conventional scanner, the sort of thing that you get with your Bayer Fang or your, you know, or your, yeah. your, your Bayer Cat scanners and so on. But because um, it's it's such it, a receiver, right? it's going it, up to it, two gigs, so yeah. <laughs> you can and, do it. And, and in fact, we're just debating the spec now in terms of how much of that stuff will be there in in a okay. future release. It will come. We've been promising it. We are a little bit late. Um, okay. Some some of the other guys, um, and I don't want to speak for them because uh, their their plans may change. But certainly, one of the other very popular packages that our, uh, our RSP customers use is most likely to have that scanning facility in uh, certainly uh, by the end of first quarter 2018 that's the plan okay. so okay. i think you know this is a classic example of something that will come through software uh, innovation and like i say we've got customers um industrial customers uh, spectrum monitoring monitoring folks who have basically built their own uh, bespoke uh, software scanning solution for the specific needs they have and the great thing about uh, um, uh, SDR Uno, of course, is uh, triggering stuff, tr triggering measurements by absolute field strength is will be another dimension. So when it comes, it's going to be great, but it's um, it's not there as of today. You have an open API as well for developers, so you know this can brings a lot of stuff in the yeah. future as well. Or yes, in fact, we uh, we had an interesting uh, you know one one customer has has used. Um, the RSPs for um, automatically positioning um, satellite receiver dishes to uh, tune for the um, maximum signal okay. strength. And they basically uh, developed their own software just doing API calls using our API, uh, just to give, give an example. So that, the, the, that's, I think we'll so, see more, more yeah. of that as well. There's so much things you can do with this. So, uh, yeah. I mean, know, one I, of the other, I was going to say one of the other things that we've we've debated a lot was that um, you can always trade off uh, maybe even better performance if you restrict the frequency range. You know, just, mm -hmm. just the way because yeah. an SDR that goes from basically DC to two gigs, it you know, there's a there's a bunch of compromises yeah. in there. Yeah, we well, put forward have, the yeah, filter design. It. We've we've you know added added uh, features. We can address software improvements that, that kind of um, help you live with that. But to, to we, we drew the line at, 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 at actually having chunks of spectrum that mm -hmm. suddenly are not available. Uh, I mean, obviously, we only go up to two gigs, so you could argue, well, hey, you don't, you don't do uh, the um, 2.4 gigs and so on. You do need to have an external down converter for that. But you've still mm -hmm. got a solution that's very, very cost effective. But sub two gigs, you've basically got the whole spectrum. Yeah. And one of the things is you may, um, you know, initially start out with one application area in mind. If you're a radio ham, um, well, if you're a radio ham, you probably want to have all the bands. Um, and, you know, some of those bands um, are not covered by other products, uh, which maybe miss out, yeah. uh, you know, 50 well, well, I, uh, miss out uh, 70 centimeters we we yeah. cover all the way through to 20 23 three centimeters. that's where the tsx will become important at those frequencies absolutely so. yeah okay and talk me about the new stuff in the software in sdr you know okay so this is something that it's it's now 18 months since we took over um the sdr uh, the S studio one software that was um it used to be about 179 bucks to, to, to buy a license yeah. to use this stuff. And we've obviously, we've adapted it quite a lot now. And because we have very highly integrated native support for our products, including now the RSP1A, we're able to do this stuff like having a very, very accurate calibrated RF power meter. I mean, it's got over 100 dBs of usable range. It means our our S meter is absolutely bang on by the you know IARU S beta standard okay. you know it is there's no debate that it is um, spot on that's the sort of thing you can do when you have the software and the hardware um, I've already mentioned earlier the ability to save 
power and SNR measurements over time and then output a CSV file. Those are the sort of things you can do when you have this tight integration of your own software working with the hardware. You can um, uh, store the IQ output um, mm -hmm. files uh, for access by other third-party applications. But um, it so, so altogether, it, it, it's a very, very sort of tight uh, experience, and, and we, we plan to build on that. So we'll be adding those new those new features, the scanner, the other the other things that will really play to the strengths of um, of our hardware. Oh, okay. John, when is it going to be available? So basically, we um, I I I had the pleasure of watching the uh, first production boards being built. We built the. Uh, uh, the product in the UK and um, the first uh, big, big boxes of, uh, of, of units were leaving the UK um, early November so the now that we're at launch time the 15th here we are of November um, I'm not saying every retail outlet will have uh, stock but certainly um, all the major uh, well-known um, shops in uh, for example ham radio outlet in the US mm -hmm. radio world in Canada uh, Martin Lynch uh, RS components uh, SDR kits who are all our kind of um, uh, channel partners have, have this product and then uh, it's kind of case by case around the world as we try and build up stock to be honest we haven't been able to build enough quickly enough so um, there will be uh, probably a bit of a shortage as we ramp up but we're doing all we can uh, particularly with uh, with Christmas coming up <laughs> we want to <laughs> make sure everybody has a chance to to get one but uh, they're basically in the shops starting to be in the shops uh, on the 15th of November 2017 you've talked that it's been three years since the first RSP one and you come a long way for that and uh, your product has been very popular the first time we talk about the RSP one I actually had a friend who talked to me about it to say you should try the RSP uh, from SDR play and is there any other future future plan or this year next yeah, year or yeah something? we we we're always cautious about saying too much because um, <laughs> so much could go wrong but we are we are looking at um you know the uh, beyond uh the current product range um but we think we're at a point now where the you know the rsp2 uh, for the, for anyone who really wants multiple antennas you know precision uh, synchronization maybe the extra rugged uh, metal box um you know it, it's still got a, a lot of life life in it so we see the rsp2 we've now got this very uh, good price performance entry product at 99.95 with the RSP1, the new RSP1A. Um, but we are looking at adding some um, additional functionality, uh, some additional, um, you know, things that we're we're listening to people. So we encourage inputs. We we are listening, and uh, uh, we will have more products, um, you know, in 2018. But it's a little bit early to to commit just as we uh, really go through the trade-offs of, of what people want, what it can be used for. Um, but I'm, I'm very much looking to, forward to the next time we can have this uh, kind of chat together, Pascal. And once again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share what we're doing here at SDR Play. So I will have your um, website address in the bottom of the screen. Yep. And also I will put on the uh, Facebook page so if people want to join and have questions so what they can do with an SDR play RSP whatever unit well they yeah. can go there and ask a question I know that's a very active uh, group I actually saw at some point someone asking who has a am radio call sign oh, yeah, and, that was like, oh, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it went very everybody went there and uh, put yeah. the call sign there was hundreds one last question John mm-hmm is there some plan for a transmitting unit? We get asked that question a lot, Pascal. And honestly, it would be great to address um, the plethora of transmit uh, requirements. It's something we look, you know, we're we're, we're looking at. But quite frankly, 
um, I don't think we'll be doing anything certainly in the next uh, in the next year but it's um, it's challenging and um, uh, you know we've got a lot to do to, to, to really grow from where we are um, really providing the best possible uh, cost-effective solutions for this mainstream receiver market okay but that's a good answer so okay. we'll see over time and there's also a lot of application like we've talked about the uh, the RSP so uh, uh, it's a it's a you have 7,000 uh, members into yeah. the Facebook group I mean, what, what's it's it's amazing. I mean this is a guy I met the other day he's got five RSPs and he, he has them on his uh, farm down in Cornwall and which is really low noise and he sets them all going and he just accesses them through SDR console and um, the guys up in Finland, you know, I gave a talk uh, to the DX Association of Finland, okay. and um, soon after, and they all bought RSP twos, and then they all went off to Lapland for three weeks, sitting in cold huts with mile-long antennas, uh, just picking up medium wave broadcasts. You know, they just do medium wave DXing from almost <laughs> almost the North Pole, <laughs> and but they, you know, they just love. Uh, uh, you know so there, it's there's still more and more we can do for these guys <laughs> so john thank you very much for this thank opportunity you. again thank and, you pascal uh, it's been great to to share our excitement with your uh audience and uh i really appreciate it thank you thank you very much and anytime if you have something new for us we're always there sorry to make you work on a saturday night <laughs> that's it. that's okay it's been great fun <laughs> thank you 73 john 73.